There was a massive drone attack on Russia this morning, and more than 20 drones attacked several Russian cities last night. There was explosions in Tula, Kaluga, Bryansk, and Moscow. Both Moscow airports are closed. Here are the videos. Russians tried some of their own medicine, and they didn't like it. Under wartime pressure, Russian Railways is reportedly planning to conscript convicts to carry out heavy labor on the railway. Russia also faces a shortage of railway freight cars, as the manufacturers have been diverted into making tanks and troop-carrying wagons. A leaked telegram issued by Russian Railways and published by the VCHK OGPU Telegram Channel instructs regional bodies to work with the Federal Penitentiary Service of Russia to attract contingents of convicts to work on the railway, likely in the next few weeks. This is due to an acute shortage of personnel, which the state-owned operator attributes to the practical impossibility of recruiting men aged 30 to 39 years old. The war economy, and likely competition from military recruitment, has made it hard to find new employees. Russian Railways reportedly does not want to raise salaries. With a workforce of over 740,000, this would almost certainly cost too much, and has turned instead to sending recruiters into Russia's prison colonies. They will be used to maintain the tracks and trains. While other Russian employers have turned to migrants from Central Asia, Russian Railways is reportedly unwilling to do so because of the need to work in sensitive facilities. It will replace existing migrant workers with convicts, who are presumably deemed more trustworthy. The war is also affecting the production of new railway wagons, tank cars, hoppers, and other freight cars. They're now in short supply due to the main manufacturer, Ural Vagonzavod, switching its resources to producing tanks and other armored vehicles for the war effort. UVZ's production of freight cars halved in 2022 from 13,800 to 7,200 units. It fell still further in 2023 with production so far down to only 4,400 units. In contrast, UVZ's production of armored vehicles has reportedly increased 400%. Some manufacturers have reduced freight car production even further. For instance, the United Carriage Company's production fell by 53% in 2022. Throughout Russia, production is down 20.4%. The cost of freight cars has risen by a third as a consequence. At the same time, UVZ has turned to recreating a type of military rail transport originally designed in the 19th century to carry men and horses. The Teplushka, a covered wagon with sliding doors and gun ports in the sides. They were used until the 1950s. An announcement says that they are planned to be used as part of special trains for transporting personnel and property, and have been equipped with berths, gun ports, ventilation hatches and heaters to keep their occupants warm. They are developed from cargo wagons. It's likely that the new-look Teplushki, which are functionally very similar to the predecessors made by UVZ in the 1930s, are intended to be used to transport fresh troops to Ukraine more efficiently than the buses that have previously been used. Similar like sending the kettle to slaughterhouse. The Russian government extended the age limit for conscription to 30, effective from January 1, 2024. These changes were approved on Friday, November 24th, as a result of the adoption of the relevant legislation by the Russian parliament, Interfax news agency reported. Now, men aged 18 to 30 will be enlisted from the beginning of 2024, while previously the maximum age of enlistment was 27.
Expert Igor Efremov, a researcher at the Gaidar Institute for Economic Policy, estimates that taking into account the new age limits, approximately 2 million more men will be drafted into the army in 2024. 9.14 million men instead of the previous 6.8 million. On the other side, President Volodymyr Zelensky tasked the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Valery Zaluzhny, Defense Minister Rustam Umyarov, and other government representatives to present a comprehensive plan for mobilization in Ukraine next week. He noted that at the Supreme Commander-in-Chief staff meeting on Friday, he listened to reports on challenges in the field of mobilization, as well as options for solving them. The whole plan will be worked out. To be honest, we have already decided some issues, but I would like people to understand the whole plan of action, where we are going, what the challenges are. The comprehensive plan on this issue will be next week. I really believe that next week. At least this is the task set for Zaluzhny, Umarov and the ministers, because many things depend on economic issues as well, and they need to be settled. They will all report comprehensively next week, Zelensky added. The issues of mobilization, demobilization, rotation, and conscript service were discussed at the meeting of the headquarters of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief on November 24th. <laughs> Krustalny town, Luhansk region occupied by Russian liberators. That is how Russians care about Donba miners, by blowing up, sinking and bringing to scraps whole coal enterprise that were the only source of income for many families. In this video, Russians have destroyed the remains of Krasnokutska mine, jeering and filming the process. <laughs> Ukrainian soldiers are moving to the front lines. Don't forget to wish them safety and have victory. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.